mind telling us about your journey, sort of like starting from there, how it was going from, you know, Mohau to... To Mohau. <laughs> <laughs> so just a brief uh, history about myself. Um, I wasn't going to do film until I was in towards the, until towards the end of matric. I was going to do law because my godfather is a judge, so I was going to go study law and you know follow in his footsteps and fight for for human rights and you know be radical like that. My my high school history. I went to uh, a high school called Saint Mary's, Waverley, ne? and this is a private school. I'm not saying that because my family could afford to do that, to, to take me there. I'm saying that because I was there on scholarship. At the time, my grandmother was a domestic worker, my mother was a domestic worker. My godfather, like I said, he, he, um, he was a judge. He actually just retired last year. He was a judge for the Constitutional Court of South Africa. Um, and he got me a, a test with SSP, which is the Student Sponsorship Program, when I was in grade seven. Um, I wrote this test, I passed it, and that's how I was able to go to St. Mary's, which is a private school, boarding school for girls. So, um, grade nine, I wasn't really sure, and then I chose drama because I enjoyed drama, not because I wanted to be an actress. And when we did drama, it, grade 10, 11, 12 of drama was not fun, it was work. It was actual hard work. We had to do rehearsals after school, and you had to do like a whole lot of other stuff, including the school play, and like you had to be involved. And it, it was kind of like setting us up for what happens in the real world of theater. Don't forget, I don't want to be an actor at this point. So now in grade 11, you are applying for varsity and all of that. Um, so I got into Rhodes and Stellenbosch and Witz and to study law. My whole matric year was towards, was, 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 was working was me working towards studying law, but then when I got to the end of matric, I assisted to help the school play, um, and it was a very very abstract kind of play about saving water, a world without water, and I got really involved in that. And our drama teacher was like, "You should really consider doing this as a career." Didn't take him seriously. When I get to so we matriculate, everything is great. See our names in the paper, Pomonate. I matriculated in 2010. In January of 2011, I'm supposed to be getting ready to go to, 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 to varsity. I was going to go to VITS. And we're getting ready to pay registration fees. And my mom gives me the registration fee money. And on the way, I walk into EFTA. And I, and I, and I ask, what's this place about, whatever, whatever. And they tell me, well, this is a, a film school, and we teach you how to become a filmmaker. I'm like, okay, realistically, how, ca how can you make money off of this? Like, in comparison to being a lawyer, how do you survive of being, what, in the film, in entertainment? <coughs> um, this, la this nice lady gave me a whole tour of the place, um, and then she says, no, you can still apply, it's January, it's fine, you can still come through. And then I'm like, okay, cool. And then she gives me the fee structure, and it was like, in 2010, it was like 80,000 rand a year. So I was like, that's not gonna happen, you know? Um, but then literally right there and there I called my mom and I was like, look, I'm not going to do this law thing. And she said, okay, come back home, you still got the rest of the week to pay for your registration, so it's not a big deal. I get home, um, actually because now at this point my mom is a nurse, she was a domestic worker, off a 600 rand salary, guys, my mom worked her way through nursing school and she paid for herself and now, 10 years later, she's a nurse. Which is a very big achievement from, you know, where we, where we come from. I was lucky enough to have parents who, when I came back and said that I'm not going to study law, something that is guaranteed to bring you a good career and a, a good income, my parents were like, do the research. We're not taking you to AFDA. It's not going to happen. We can't afford that. But do the research and find a place where you can learn the same thing um, at a cheaper rate. So I did some research. Literally in a week, I had found out about this audiovisual communications course at UJ, audio visual communication. So it's audio, visual, communications. And um, in essence, it's film and television accompanied with a communications um, uh, course and a few other electives. Um, I brought that information back to my mom. So basically, I get into varsity. It's my first year, now it's 2011. Get into varsity. We start in Feb, and okay, we're doing the theory, 
and me being Mugao, I get frustrated and I'm like, where is the shooting? Where is me directing? Where is me telling people what to do, you know? Then me and my friend, a friend of mine, Roger, actually, <laughs> we go around asking production companies, hey, please, can we shadow you? Please, can we just shadow your director? Can we be on your set? A lot of production companies are like, no, what experience do you have? What are you going to do? You are a liability. Now we must insure you. Now we must do all these things. Um, and the, the one thing that they said was that you are in first year and it's only March of your first year. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. You know, learn the basics first and then when you get to second year, you and I can have a conversation. Mora was like, no, that's not going to happen. Another person said that if you want to be on set, just being on set, try being an extra. So I, I called this agency. I don't even know where I got the details from. I called this agency and they were like, hey, listen, um, we're not going to get you on set as an actor, but you know, e extra wise you can do. But before that, just know what there's auditions. I can see in your CV, because I sent a CV and everything. We can see in your CV that you speak Sibedi. So there are auditions for this new Sibedi show that's happening next week. Actually, it wasn't next week, it was like two days later. Mm -hmm. Go uh, audition for a character called Rachel. My first audition. I get there, I was late at the end of the day as well because I had class that day. Um, and I get there, I audition for Rachel, they're like, Ugh, yeah, no, not really going to work. Okay, read this other role. Um, and I audition for Mapizi. And in the taxi going back home, they give me a call and they're like, look, we really like you for Mapizi, come back for a callback. My first audition was my first job. And I've been at Skim Sam since 2011. Now we are a soapy on SABC One. The point of my background story is to tell you that, you know, we've heard about some people who weren't even nearly interested in the film and television field, and now you're here as a nail technician, now you are here working in the industry. Um, and that's my journey, that's how I started. I started coming from a family of domestic workers where when the relatives heard that my mom wants to be a nurse, they laughed. And then when I said that I want to be in, in the film industry, they laughed. And now people want to be my friend because I'm on TV. <laughs> so that's my story. I'm sorry it was so long. <laughs> that's a very long story. We're going to have to edit half of that. <laughs> so so uh, just, just zoning in more on the journey um, and your craft and sort of how, how you've managed to own the craft and own your character. What was that like coming from a place where you, you, you had the drama background, but you didn't have the screen background? So that, that switch, number one, going from stage to screen. And then the getting to know your character. Because you know, a lot of the times with actors, you sort of, you get your role, you've got a finite point in your role. Now you've been in this character for eight, for nine years. Okay, my maths, again, for nine years. Yeah. <laughs> you've been in this character. How has that progression grown? Like growing with the character and growing? Um. Look, okay, firstly, when I was doing drama in, in high school, né, I wasn't doing it as an actor. I did act a little bit because we had to, but I was more of the technical team. Like, I've, my, my dream was never to be in front of the camera. I'm really glad that I am right now because it's like it opens up a lot of opportunities. I facilitate, I do workshops. Like, there's a lot of stuff that you can do outside of acting that relate to the industry. Um, I still aspire to be a director, but I'm, I'm learning. And, and, and acting has been like my security, if you get what I mean. So in terms of the character, it's been very difficult. You, like Karabo said, when he met me, guys, like, this was not me. I was like a proper tomboy. Like, my, if you, even if you see my hair under this wig, it's like short and it's scruffy because that's, who, that's how I am. Guys, um, my, my little brother actually has no she, style. Like, <laughs> literally, he used to call me, he still calls me his little brother. <laughs> Um, but but it was very difficult. The character that I was playing, Mapizi, um, she's a, she's such a girly girl. She was doing pageants and she's doing nails and hair and everything. So it was a bit difficult for me to to get into the character um, because it's just not who I am. But that's what acting is. Acting is pretending to be someone else for a short period of time, uh, and and trying your best to do that person who is just on paper technically, um, trying to do them justice. So it's difficult because sometimes you have to not judge your character. For example, my character on Skim Sam, 
has a baby and she fell pregnant at 16. I don't have kids, I'm 27. And I'm nowhere near ready to have kids, <laughs> you know? So during that time when I'm playing this character, like there was a bit of judgment that went towards her that like, why are you making such bad life decisions? I wouldn't do that. And then you have to pull yourself back and say, but it's not you, this is someone else's story that they're living. And lucky for me, um, when that storyline came out, actually, I was given enough time to go and research about teenage pregnancy, about um, you know being a young mother, and 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 the the whole stigma behind going to a hospital and being pregnant at a young age. So research is very important in trying to encompass and and portray a character because without research, you're only going to you're going to limit the character to what you know. You know. So if you, if if for example, if you're playing a gangster. We all have an idea of what a gangster is. And if you do your research, you'll find out oh, there are different kinds of gangsters. There are gangsters that are like, yeah, 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 hear me law. And then there are gangsters that are just like, no. And they sit back and they, and things happen without them even having to say anything. You know? So how do you portray that if you don't know that it even exists? Um, and that's where research is important in encompassing an actor, I mean, a character. So, do your research, you get your character down, you lock it in and you're like, this is my character. But we all know that, as, as, first of all, as humans, as you grow, you grow. Like, you change, your views change. So, we're guessing that the character also kind of goes through those changes. And then there's also the personal, and then there's the character. To which degree do you separate the two so that one does not filter onto the other? Is it always possible? Is it... Um, I don't think it's always possible because, you know, sometimes you agree with what the character's views are. Like as much as sometimes you disagree, um, I've 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 done other work. I've done Mzansi magic short stories. I've I've done theater, like an actual theater play outside of Skimsam, um, and and sometimes you don't have to separate the two, but you need to look at how the character is not you and, and, and how the rest of the character, how, how playing that character um, is justified by what the character's experiences are. Does that make sense? I don't know if that yeah, makes sense. Is. Yeah, so if I'm going to, if me as Morao, I'm going to act in a particular way to being angry, my character could also act in a particular way, like could act in the same way that I would act as Morao, but for different reasons. You know, so when you look at the dialogue, Morao, the actor, would get um, angry at certain things that she's saying, you know, because of the history that I have with, let's say it's a scene about my mom, the, with the history that I have with my mom, I could get angry at p specific things that I'm saying um, that relate to my mom, whereas the character could have a different experience with their mom. So let's say the character had a very bad relationship with their mom, and Morao had a good relationship with her mom. So the character would get angry or emotional or play certain things, um, or certain parts in the script in a particular way based on the relationship that they have with whatever the story is trying to portray. So you can have the same reaction, but it will be different based on on, on the levels and, the, and, and where you put your emphasis when you're being the character. Uh, Sorry, my answers are very long because I like to talk, so you need to pull me to order. <laughs> I have a question. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, seeing that it's a series, the, the pipeline is different for an actor, of course. If, if you're in the phone and they give you a, a script, and you genuinely have preparation to figure out the character. I want to know, do you get that in the series? Like when you first start, do they just say your characters, this, that, and that, and that, and that? You do that. Or do you have time to mold the character into your way? And does it, does it, does it if you ever do get preparation, does it happen every time they write new storylines for you? No, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen every time. Um, so when, when the show first started, please, please remember, guys, like I'm, I, I don't have a lot of experience in the outside world of acting, but I've got a lot of experience in a long form soapy. Yeah. Yeah? Um, I've done a few work there, but I wouldn't, it's not, it's not enough for me to say, you know, I've been able to, you know. 
uh, to get into a character that deeply. Um, in the beginning, when Skim Sam was, uh, season one of the show, it was, it was, it was a 13 part series. Ne? So, no, I did not have enough time to prep for the character because my character was like that small at the time. So, they only gave um, the lead characters like preparation time and it was and it was a, it was a I mean I did a few workshops with them just so that I'm, I was more comfortable in front of the camera but in terms of dealing with the character we didn't do much with that but I know that the leads of the character of, of the show they got a lot of time to you know to go into their their story and their journey and to research a whole lot of things um, these days because it's long form I just go on the fact that I know my character and that's why I end up fighting with directors sometimes and I say, this ca my character would not say this because I've been playing her for 10 years, you know? My character would not walk into a room of adults and not greet. Unless you've come to me and you've, or, or, or they want to take the character in a different direction, then that's a conversation we need to have. Um, like what uh, Kit was saying, that, you know, sometimes the only thing that you can control at a particular time is the performance, you know? Um, it's, it's a conversation that we need to have with directors and with script writers to say, this is where your character's going. She's be getting, going through a stage where she's going to be very disrespectful because it's going to lead to something like that, which will justify why I would walk into a room of adults and not say hello. Do you get what I mean? So the preparation thing is, I mean, a lot of people, we were talking about it now, like it's, 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 it's so important when you're an actor and people think that you just get on, like you just get a script and you read it and you understand and you're ready. There's so many layers that go into giving a very good performance um, that could make or break your career. And some people don't take that seriously, you know, um, but some people do and, and they end up producing really good work. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was just curious from the, from the series perspective, I just wanted to well, you answered it, but mm. why I asked, I was just curious, because we do know if you get longer time to prep, you'll have a better situation. You know but what? I just, I, sorry, I just wondered oh. if that is an option for... It, it, it kind of is. So, so what happens is that um, in a long-form show, in a soap, you know, you've got... Um, I gotta, do you guys know about A storyline, B storyline, C storyline? Yeah. Yeah? Do you all know about it? Yeah. No. So... With a show, ne? I mean, even, even in film, you've got, you've got a storyline. So this is your driving story. Ne? Um, this is, the story is about Karabo, who is trying to make a film. And then you've got your B storyline. That's, uh, while Karabo is trying to make a film, his dad is going through stuff at home. That's the B storyline. Karabo makes appearances in that uh, in his dad's issues, and his dad's issues affect Karabo and how he ends up making his film. But the main story is not his dad's issues. The main story is Karabo trying to make a film. And then they see storyline. I don't know if they see storyline in films, but then they see storyline, which is like, yeah, you know, it's just a, an extra story that you put in for. I mean, it, it has meaning to the bigger story. But it, more than anything else in the soapy, I think it's just to kill time. <laughs> more than anything else. Or, or sometimes, sometimes, actually, I'm lying. I'm lying. So actually, sometimes C storyline is the beginning. It's building to B storyline, and then it's going to build to A storyline. But sometimes it literally is just because, you know? But a lot of the times, it, 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 it's, it's building towards something. So in long form, if you're A storyline, yeah, chances are at the beginning of the season, they're going to give you a brief of, because these people plan like the whole season months in advance, right? So they'll give you a, 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 um, a briefing to say, this is where your character is going to go. And then you will get, you will do your own research. Unfortunately, because it's so tight with long form, there's, I mean, it's like 280 something episodes for a year. And that's a lot of episodes. So, so sometimes the scripts don't come out as quickly as you'd like them to, to, to be released so that you can do your research. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's like it's a, it's a writing thing where they don't give you the scripts in time. Um, 
but a lot of the times they would have briefed you, if you're, especially if you're a storyline, they would have briefed you about where your story is going. And then you can start doing the research so that by the time the scripts come out, you're not starting from scratch. You know, so, but as actors, it's always important to, to constantly research different characters that you're interested in or ones that you're afraid of. I research characters that I'm afraid of playing so that one day when I actually do get an opportunity to play it, I am not starting from scratch. I mean, that's the one thing I wanted to, I'll, I'll get, gonna she get to you guys. She Who? Oh, oh, did you? Okay, so these the first, and then you, and then you. Yeah. Um, but that's the one thing I wanted to, to actually ask you about as well, right? Is because a lot of people look at the business and they go, oh, this is, oh, it's so much fun, you're in front of the camera, you're acting, oh, it's so glamorous. But then, how grueling is it going through 200 plus episodes for a season? And like, the constant, the call time, the, you know, constant changes, the, just managing that, managing that schedule. I'll you know what, I just got a schedule now, actually, while we were in here, and my, like, I just went like, <laughs> because of the workload. But the nice thing about being on a long form show is that, it's not going to be your storyline forever, you know? Because what, does, what happens with the audience, they get bored of seeing the same people for a long period of time. Like I said, this is 280 something episodes. So that's Monday to Friday for the whole year, right? You don't want to see me Monday to Friday every day for the whole year, you know? Um, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, but so, so, so the, 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 the thing is that um, it gets hectic. As an actor, I, I feel bad for crew. This is why, ish man, crew works hard, guys. I feel bad for crew because crew's at work Monday to Friday, 6 to 6, you know? And if we're behind, then they're there on Saturdays sometimes. And then when we do location, then they must also, you know? So I feel bad for crew. But as an actor, um, I was explaining to Karabo that last week was absolutely horrible for me. Last week shooting, I was there every day, mostly for the whole day. This week, I am mostly free. I'm shooting on, on Thursday. Um, I might have to go in on Friday, but it, 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 you know, it has its ups and downs based on what the storyline is. You know? So it does get hectic, but I know if I'm a storyline, then I'm only going to be busy for, like, very, very, very busy for like two to three months, shooting hard every single day. But then when I'm BC storyline, Guys, like, and I'm, and I'm going into my, my BC storyline stage right now where I'm going to work for a bit and then chill for like, next week I'm going to work. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's, I, I can see that the scenes are getting less per day um, and it doesn't become as strenuous. And you, like, sometimes I go into work at six o'clock and I'm done by eight in the morning. So it's, I'm at work, but am I working the whole day? No. And like crew has to be there until we rap. No. So uh, be actors, guys. Did I? Hmm. I don't like your questions. <laughs> I like your questions. <laughs> I really don't like your questions. Okay, question number one. Um, did I continue or did I finish studying? <sighs> <laughs> I did continue. Don't judge me. This is my journey, and I'm going to be honest. Uh, Audiovisual communication was a three-year degree, guys. I finished it in six years. <laughs> in six years. <laughs> I finished in six years. Yes, Guys, all that matters is that you finished. I failed so badly and I made some, please don't show this to my mom. I made so many excuses as to why I was failing. You know, like, like, you know, me, I'm trying to be an actor even though my main goal was not to be an actor. And my mom kept asking me, so when are you directing her? When are, where's your writing? Where? Well, let's see it. Um, and, and this is something that we used to say, I don't know if it was with you or with Ost, 
but we used to say you can't make a reputation, you can't build a reputation of what you're going to do. Mm. You can't. So, yeah, write it down. <laughs> you, and I'll say it again, you cannot build a reputation of what you're going to do. Hey, I'm going to be a director, where's your work? Where? <laughs> Hey, I'm going to be a, a, an actor. Okay, where's your work? You know, until someone has seen you, until someone either than yourself and either than your family members have seen you do what you say you're going to do, you've got no reputation. You can't call yourself an actor. You can't call yourself a director. You can call yourself an aspiring to be positive and to manifest things, but unfortunately you're not, um, <laughs> no, you're not a director. Uh, the 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 writing I still write I write a lot I love writing uh, fear I I you you know I pitched something to the SABC last year and they loved it for such a long time and then they rejected it and I got the email after a year of going through back and forth of you know of, of, of dealing or, or not even developing but they were just asking certain questions about the story um, and then they keep quiet for like four months and then they send you an email to say, no, come back in. And then this year, in Feb, it was end of Jan, Feb, I got the letter, the email saying, sorry, but uh, we're not going to go with your project. Yeah. It shatters you. So I'm still recovering from that. I still, I have a lot of stories um, and, and I love my stories. I'm just really afraid of what people are going to do with my stories. I'm afraid of, of, of what people are going to think about my stories because like I said, I, I criticize or not even, let me not say criticize because that sounds bad. I critique um, people's work. <laughs> so and I don't want people to do the same thing with mine. I'm okay with, with them judging my acting because it's, 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 it's not my baby, you know? Um, Hey, but my writing, it's a bit... Do you know my issue is? I'm on a soapy, so I'm comfortable. I'm good. Like, I, 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 I know I'm doing, I'm doing a whole lot of other stuff that bring extra money on the side. As an actor, the reality is that you have to do other stuff. You can't rely on um, acting jobs forever, you know? Uh, that's why you'll see a lot of actors now everybody's a DJ have you guys noticed yeah. Mm. yeah and it's because when you get booked people are tired of just booking you for an appearance they want you to come and do something so it's more worthwhile if they book you as a DJ I can't DJ to save my life I don't have the passion to learn so um, you, mm? you tried <laughs> you tried to teach me how to DJ oh my god oh guys oh. <laughs> so so what I do is that I facilitate um, workshops, I, I MC, I do like a whole lot of other gigs on the side to keep me going. That is also kind of a distraction from, <clears throat> you know, following my actual passion of writing. But, but this year's the year, guys, 2020, 2020. <laughs> like, you're going to see something from me by the end of this year, and you're going to love it so much. Yes. And it's gonna. And the next time you guys have the film fest, I'm gonna come and show my work, and you guys are like gonna bow down yeah. and be like, yes. So um, it's a risk, but I I think I've delayed taking the risks because I'm okay. Like I I've, I'm doing other things that are helping me survive. I think if I wasn't surviving, then you know, yeah. then yeah. That's why some people take the risk of leaving their work. Like Kit said, she left her one company to go work at another one for growth. And I haven't done that yet because I also love where I work. So <laughs> there's no need. All right, let's take a question. Okay. Um, basically, your background is like quite similar to mine. So, um, except for the fact that I was a numbers guy. So is that yeah. <laughs> so when you, when you wanted the select few that connected to numbers, people always marginalize you like you're supposed to be an accountant, mm -hmm. supposed to do something that has to do with banking. So I was pushed into doing something like that. But then I always knew at the back of my mind that I'm a creative. And my career choice was I wanted to be an architect, which was kind of a hybrid between being a, mat a maths guy and mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I, I didn't know that I was a creative actually. Uh, qualification, BSc in statistics and mathematics. Ooh. But then I, 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 I think it. 
<laughs> While I was working, I became depressed because this is not who I am. Now, so my question is, some of the stuff that you learned, because it seems like you kind of bumped in your career, right? Like, kind of. Yes, yeah. as an actor, yes, yeah. Yeah. So what are the, some of the stuff that you had to unlearn, you know? And you're very technical, the way you explain things, you, like you layer them. Like, Thank you. How, 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 <laughs> did, how did you, did you learn that because, because you had the talent naturally, or did you go to school to have to learn that? Look, man, I've always had an issue with school. Okay. Like, like I said, my high school career, people were like, you're not doing well because I'm going there, but now they're going there. Um, varsity it took me six years to finish a three-year degree. Like, the average person will at least finish in four, five, <laughs> it took six. You know, um, and it's, 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 I don't know, it's, it's, it's tricky because I think naturally I'm a technical person, which is why being a human rights lawyer was like, it made sense for everyone. It made sense. I mean, I did debating in, in, in high school, which is not what law is, but a lot of people understand when you say, Hore, I'm, I'm able to fight for certain people's needs, you know? Um, and for my views, I'm able to fight for them. But it, like I said, it was tricky when fighting for personal things like writing and idea. When, when, you th when, you're, when you're trying to convince people of your ideas, that's a very personal space because you're going into things that other people don't know about you. And someone might just think that you're weird. Crazy. Yeah, you know. Um, but look, I commend you for, 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 for finishing the degree and for going into and, and for seeing it through, you know. Sometimes our journeys are to see something through until you realize that it's not where you're supposed to be. Because if you don't see something through, you'll always have that thing, I could have, I, I would have, I, you know. Like if you hadn't seen it through um, and you had just decided from a very early on, from a very early stage that you are just going to do film. You could be saying, Ish, I could have had this much by now because you know, filmmaking isn't making me money at this point or it's not doing whatever. But because you've seen it through, you understand how it made you feel. You know? So, and, and, and the one thing about, about filmmaking that I will always emphasize is that whether it's a a commercial or a short film or a soapy, your biggest thing is how you leave people feeling. And everybody in this room understands or should understand the passion that goes into, into, into filmmaking, you know? Sometimes people from the outside look at you waking up at 4 a.m. to be on set at 6 and they're like, I would never. And uh, while you're doing it, while you're waking up, you're looking at that snooze button and you're like, oh. Um, but then the moment you get onto set, you are reminded that this is why I do this. This is why I, 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 I wake up and go to sleep at late hours. So for the final product, and I don't know if I answered your question. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> the question that, what are, what are some of the stuff that you had to unlearn? Oh, what did I have to unlearn? Yeah. Um, so I am, uh, Garabo mentioned it earlier. I, I, I was a hectic tomboy. No, I honestly don't care about image. I had to unlearn. For the longest time when Instagram came out, I didn't have it. Like, I was like, what's this? I'm an artist. I'm a writer. Yeah. You know, I don't care if I'm, you, you know, if I'm scruffy or if I'm whatever. I don't even think you had a phone that could have Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. Guys, you, it was rough, you know? And that's fine because now I get to tell my story and be like, huh, that's what I've got now. But so um, I had to unlearn my view of, of the industry that we're in. Um, you're not just an artist. In this day and age, being an artist means that you are you're online. Like I said, you can't make a reputation of what you're going to do. Or like people aren't going to know you can do something if they've never seen you do it. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, social media right now is such a good platform for you to, to showcase your work, even if you're not getting paid for it. Um, and I had to unlearn the, 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 my whole view of social media, and I'm very anti-globalization, actually, to, to a certain degree. I, I enjoy 
I, I love how globalization brings us all together, but I hate how it's making us lose ourselves as black people, you know? Because, oh no, you are so Americanized, we're, we're, we're Westernized, and we're, we're losing our essence, and we're forgetting what brought us through the struggle. Do you get what I mean? Um, and so I, I had to unlearn a lot about how I saw the rest of the world and my contribution to the world and the industry and, and how it can affect or change me. So at some point I had to give in and be like, look, this Instagram thing, it needs to be a real thing and I need to post so that when I get booked as an MC, when I'm not being booked as an actor, I can still survive. You know, um, what else did I have to unlearn? I had to unlearn not having discipline. I was telling Robin now that this is something that I've actually started recently. I am putting structure in my life. As artists, we feel like, oh, it's okay to just let things happen. The reality is that, um, uh, what's that saying? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Yeah? Hard work, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And they are, we know so many people who are so talented, like who are so good at what they do, but because they're not pushing, they're not trying to educate themselves, they're not trying to practice at their craft, um, they're not taking it seriously, they're not looking at it as work, they see it as a hobby or they see it as something that they've just been good at their whole lives. Uh, they end up being nothing in the industry. Nobody knows their names. But the people who aren't as talented, who are working hard, who are pushing, um, become, at, at some point, they, they deceive you into thinking that they're just as talented as the other person. But it's honestly just because of, of how hard they work, you know? And, and, and their ability to say, I'm not good at this, so I'm going to bring Kaden on or Garabo on to help me with it so that I can look like I'm better at it. I had to unlearn that whole thing of, of, of looking at myself as just an artist. And I had to say that I'm a brand. Um, being an artist comes with other opportunities. How do I tap into those opportunities? And you can't tap into it if people don't know that you do the other stuff. So I hope that answers your question now. Unlearn. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> uh, oh, wait, we yeah, had this question. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's no system because we feel in Singapore, you don't have a story about this. But I live, you're in this is a reason I caution my family. But every picture I have, you feel it because you feel it when you're and you feel it when you don't get that attached. So we 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 saw a pillar and we see this. I think we don't agree. It's the opinion, it's not that bad. I hope that. But we feel it. I don't think you can, I think, you, you know, it's, 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 um, it's dangerous to say that there are facts yeah. in film, no? Because I think we've got way too many films that have shown us that there are no set rules. I mean, we've got the basic rules that, 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 that you can follow. And that's why the, with, with the script writing presentation that they showed you earlier, they said that when you know the rules well enough, you are able to break them. So. Who's to say? I mean, I can't think of one now. Maybe there is, but who's to say there aren't stories that, that have C storylines? Maybe there's a story. Maybe there's a C storyline that you're not noticing. There actually is. Um, it's in film. The only difference is that it's the way that it collapses on each other. Mm -hmm. In a series, it does that. Everything yeah, kind of grows. Leads into the, leads into the other. 
in a feature film, it collapses. So you set up your character, but you always set up three different things about your character. There's always the environment, there's always the goal, and there's always the internal struggle. Those are three different storylines. And at some point, think about moonlighting. The environment, what was he going against? The, his main thing was surviving his environment. B storyline was the, sto the drug problem with his mom. C storyline was his identity in its, in its entirety. And that comes back at the end and it all collapses into each other where he, then he gets his moment and then you realize, okay, he's become this hardened black gangster who is, happens to be gay. So that's the full storyline of, that's all three storylines kind of. That's why I was saying, Wori, look, everybody's entitled definitely to their own opinion about how the film industry is structured or it should be structured or it, what it can and can't do. Everyone is, is, is entitled to their opinion. Um, and, and what I was saying is that I think it's dangerous as a filmmaker or as a creative to limit yourself. So when you say there is no storyline in film, you are limiting yourself to the opportunities that could come if you added a C storyline. That's all it is. It's a bit dangerous because someone could come up with something amazing just because they've opened their, their mind to the possibility that something that you, 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 you don't think exists right now, that it could exist. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, no, it's fine. That's, I'm just saying, Gori, in your thinking about the, the, any creative space, don't limit yourself. For a long time, let's go into music. Ama piano was not a thing. It was a thing, Kopitori. And people were told that Ama piano is not going to get anywhere. And then Kom made it, and everybody was like, Kom, yeah, you know? And still, if you, if you listen to interviews with people who, have been, who, who play Ama piano, they've been doing it. But they never got their break because they were told that the industry is not made for it. It doesn't cater to them. Look where Ama piano is as a genre right now. So because they, they've, they kept on pushing and, 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 um, and, and, and they've convinced people that there is a space for them, they are the biggest genre right now in South Africa. So all I'm saying is that don't limit yourself because there are opportunities out there that you might miss out on because you have one set way of thinking. That's why I love you, man. Jeez, I can't believe it. I'm not sure. It's OK. Uh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Can we, can we take just one last question? I'm gonna, sorry. Shin, his hand go was up. His hand was hands. up before. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like it. So, uh, what do you have in mind with uh, the character that you will be playing with? Uh, because it's scripted, it's not based on a true story or something. Where do you start to research and stuff like the character and stuff? So, um, so like I said, with the character that I'm playing now, uh, I, I researched it a long time ago. So what I did is that I looked up, okay, so I, I use watching stuff as an excuse to say I'm researching. <laughs> nah, I'm addicted to like Netflix and Showmax and like just general entertainment. I watch stuff. No, but sometimes we know, we, we, you, sometimes you research because you're looking for something in particular, and sometimes you're just like, ooh, this is nice, and you forget. At the end of the episode, you have to say, oh, now I have to watch it again because you weren't paying attention to the thing that you were supposed to be paying attention to. So what I do is that I, I um, and I didn't do it in depth with the other character, with, with, with this character when, when, um, um, when I first got it, because like I said, it was a very small role. All I was was a girlfriend, was the girlfriend of the lead who bumped a guy. That's all I was. I was a girlfriend. So when, when the character developed and became pregnant and I started becoming one of the lead actors, um, that's when I started looking at, you know, different kinds of teenage actors, you know, or teenage, not teenage actors, but teenage characters to see what kind of way do I want to play it. Cause like I said, the character is a girly girl, but there's so many different kinds of girly girls that you can play um, that, that ne don't necessarily deviate from the script. It doesn't deviate from the script. It just, it's just how you play it, you know? So, yeah, I don't know, is that? Okay. Okay, we can sneak one in. Quick one. <laughs> Hi. I just say inside the process of, say, I'm a film watching 
do that with the storyline C that I can get to the show, which might go in the show for the storyline. So what is the process of communicating that concept in the show for the Oof. Yeah, I get this a lot. Um, so the, the sad, sad, sad reality is that big shows aren't going to hire you if they haven't seen what you've done. No. Um, and like I said, they plan a year in advance. Like they have, they might not have the actual script, but they have. Um, a general idea of what the characters are going to be going through. So what do you call them? Like like a synopsis. So they'll say, okay, from this period to this period, this is what, this is our A storyline, and um, this is what the character is going to go through and whatever. And then the writers go and write the script. And that's what you get, Gary, last minute. If you want to write a, a, a certain storyline for, for a show, the only way to do it is to send your CV your CV is going to have to show what you've done or what you are able to do. Um, I don't know if the process is, is they have to see what you've shot or just what you've written to see how good you are. But I mean, when I think about it, if, if, if someone comes to you and says, I want to work with you, you're going to ask them, okay, let me see what you've done. Um, and unfortunately, in this industry, when you're working with like big shows, it's, it's, it's difficult to get just even a conversation with someone about how to get your work in. But the best way is write. When I write the story, um, copyright it as well. <laughs> write it, copyright it, make sure it's protected. Um, and then pitch it like, a, a, like you were pitching a short film. Because I get it's a storyline. So, so you pitch it like you're pitching a short film. You, chances are you're going to have to call the production company, ask for a meeting with um, production manager. Production manager will tell you, uh, 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 listen, we're not hiring people, we're not doing whatever. If they are looking for someone or if they do like your story enough, maybe they'll then um, refer you to like the head writer. And then they'll pay you maybe a freelance fee. Uh, but chances are you know, it's going to be a mission to, I was trying to get the, for a friend of mine, I was trying to get the, the the producers of of Uzalo for the past week for a friend of mine. So my friend knows that I know people who work at Uzalo, and she wants the details. I'm trying to get a, like just to get the details, not even a meeting. I just want to get an email address that I, that I know they're going to see, not the one that they have on the thing. Ah, and it was difficult, even though I know people who work there, because people don't just give out personal email addresses and personal numbers. So unfortunately, it's going to be a huge struggle. But I think the best way to start is to write it first, protect it. And then um, if you do end up getting the meeting, make sure that you're ready for that meeting. Don't get there. If, don't, don't let them call you up and say, hey, you wanted to pitch us a story two weeks ago. Uh, come see us tomorrow. And then you say, ah, no, sorry. I'm not ready, no. Where by the time you go approach a production, make sure that what you have to offer is ready. Cool. So, Mahal, do you have any parting words that you want to, like, last bit of advice for everybody to? Um, last word of advice. So, I like quotes a lot, guys, ne? because I respect people who have been through things that we haven't been through. Yeah, ish. <laughs> Trust me, like, She's been writing all the time. <laughs> what was the first one? Uh, how do, what? No, no, you can't, you can't make a reputation. Yes, uh -huh. See, there we go. <laughs> so so I, I, I find it so important, and this is why I love being on an SABC education show. So one of my plans for next year, I'm going to apply this year. One of my plans for next year is, is to study community development. Because I've always, you know, I've always had a passion for community development and all of that. So now I'm actually going to study it to take it more seriously. Um, I think that it's always important to learn off of other people's mistakes. There is no need for you to make the mistakes that other people have made. Ne? Save yourself the time. And it's okay because we don't need this thing. So save yourself the time and the energy um, of, 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 
of making mistakes that you don't have to make, guys. If you know you need a business plan, make a business plan. If you know you need a treatment, make a treatment. Get the people who are going to help you to get the things done so that you can get the money, you know? Um, like I said, I like quotes. So one, me saying this um, reminds me of a quote, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. You know, don't approach people also be ready in fair to like do you know how annoying it is to get an email that says I want to do a project with you, what 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 and I'm like cool, like show me what you want to do. Ah no, I'm still going to then why did you contact me? You know, if you get that meeting with, with the with the producer, if they say, Okay, show me what you have now and you say, Ish, I still need to write the end of the no. <laughs> You know, you're not serious. So parting words is that Always be prepared. Me, right now, I'm preparing. I was so inspired by Queen Sono, guys. Like, I watched it all in, in, in literally in one day. I watched all six episodes. Right now, me, as Morao, I'm trying to eat healthier. I'm trying to be fit. Why? Because I'm preparing for my superhero role. <laughs> so one day, when someone comes and says, hey, you've got an audition to be a superhero or an athlete or whatever that needs to be fit in a show, um, I'm not going to be starting from scratch. And they don't have to get me a trainer and all of that stuff. I will, I will be ready, or almost ready, at least. Do you get what I mean? So failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So don't prepare yourself for failure. Prepare yourself for the success that you know you deserve. If you don't think you deserve it, then fine, do nothing. But then don't waste other people's time saying that you want to do something when you haven't even gotten to the point where you believe in yourself for it. Because other people are serious out there. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much thank for you, coming. Thank you, I'm even sitting. This was fun. <laughs> <laughs>